Welcome. It was not my intention to make another video tonight. Uh, I had intended to uh, stop producing content for the night, but just so happens I ran into a video that's a perfect case study of discipline. Now in this particular video, we'll notice that discipline is closely linked to self-control, composure, being able to keep oneself from coming out of character. And so the video that we're about to consider is a debate between Governor Maddox and Mr. Jim Brown. So let's see uh, what we can learn uh, from this situation when it comes to discipline. So before we start the video, I will ask the viewers to do one thing. I would ask you to try to be objective. Try to pull all of the emotion out of the situation uh, so that you can hear clearly the line of thought, the logic behind uh, each individual's thought process, and how discipline affects the way that they express themselves. So let's get into the video and see what we can learn. <coughs> no, I, I think uh, I think forced racial segregation is criminal and unconstitutional, and I think forced racial integration is criminal and unconstitutional. I think either one of them is, is cruel. You mean on by social? Force. You mean on social level? Any level, if it, where it's forced. <clears throat> well, we do have like uh, the laws. You mean when the laws are enforced? that if it involves uh, integration, then it is wrong. If it forces people against their will, against denying them their choice, to then you separate mean there or to be, integrate, there should be an it'd exception. be just as wrong if, it, if the law would be just as wrong to, to force them to integrate as it would to be to force them to segregate. Well, then. Okay, so uh, we have the subject that's being discussed. Uh, we now, we're fully aware of what's going on now. But now, what I want you to do from a logical standpoint is to see that uh, Governor Maddox has set a precedent. Uh, he is against forced segregation. He's against forced integration. In his mind, there should be a choice for each individual to make, and that choice should not be legislated. It should be the choice of each individual, and however they feel is how they'll proceed. That's important. Keep that precedent in mind. Let's keep going. Don't you? If a country can finally get to the point of saying, well, you're going to hire this person, you're going to promote this person, you're going to serve this person, or you, then the country, <clears throat> same country can come right around and tell you, going, you've got to work for that person, you've got to eat with that person, you've got to be served by that person. And this would be cruel and wrong, but so it is when it tells another person that you've got to do this. Well, the laws of the land tells us all what we have to do, basically. That doesn't make it right. Mm. Well, I agree with that, but I mean, don't you I mean, believe, don't you believe... The Supreme Court goes outside the Constitution, <clears throat> that doesn't make the Supreme Court right, does it? Don't you believe to have an affluent society, we've all, like, uh, chose to live in a society together, don't you believe that to preserve that society that we need laws, laws of the land, that's why we have a society. And uh, we cannot make exception to these laws just because a person happens to be black or white, don't you? So there, uh, Mr. Brown uh, sets a precedent of his own. So in order to have an organized society of individuals who have different thoughts and different opinions about different subjects, there has to be laws that govern the welfare of each individual involved in the society. And those laws cannot be arbitrarily dismissed based upon a condition that a particular person has. In this case, it's the ethnic group of a person. Now, they're saying race, uh, and some of you may be okay with that term, but I choose the term ethnic group because there's only one human race, and all of us are a part of it even though we do share some very distinct differences. We're all one race. So let's keep going. We've got that? most of these laws because we don't <clears throat> abide by the laws of God, though. And so we, we, try to, we try to go against the laws of God and against the laws <laughs> of nature, and we say, well, now, you're, you're inferior, and you're not going to be able to meet with success in education or in your social life, <clears throat> even in your religious life, 
life unless you do it with another race. And this teaches inferiority to me. As and it's wrong and it's criminal and it's cruel to teach any one person that he <clears throat> is inferior to another race or his race is inferior. But as governor of uh, the state of Georgia, did you go by the laws of God or by the laws of the state? I go by the laws of God and by the laws of the state. As you see fit. What, what is... Uh... <laughs> no, sir, not as I do. <clears throat> so, uh, there again, as we mentioned, logical, reasonable debate. So, we've already established two things. We've established that Governor Maddox is saying that it's criminal, unconstitutional, to force a person to segregate or to force a person to integrate. That was the first precedent. The second precedent was made by Mr. Brown when he said that in a society of people who have chosen to live together, there has to be order, therefore there has to be rules, laws that govern how we interact with each other so that society can continue to move forward and progress. So, uh, the logical uh, determination then is that since we have these laws that govern the way that we interact with each other and those laws are geared toward helping us to proceed as a society then those laws need to be adhered to regardless of our personal preference and then you see mr maddox inject the thought of obeying god the laws of God uh, as opposed to the laws of men. So now, is that an objective way to an approach? Because now, different individuals have different views as to what is required of them from their creator. That's subjective. What we're talking about here is a, a situation where they're debating the rule of law. Something that has been written down cold hard fact it's not it's not anything that's subjective this is the law and as an individual who wants to be a part of an orderly society wouldn't it be wise to abide by the laws that have been put in place let's keep going i just want to ask the governor uh, when, when you say it's uh, it's morally wrong um Integration, I believe that's what you said. Or, or it's I said basic. forced segregation or forced integration, <clears throat> racial integration uh -huh. or forced seg or racial segregation. They're both morally wrong, cruel, and they're in violation of the United States Constitution, which is the law of the land, not the Supreme Court ruling that yeah. denies the Constitution. You know, I, I assume you know Dr. Billy Graham. <clears throat> Sir? I said, I said, you know, Dr. Billy yes, Graham. Yes, sir. He was here last night, and he, he said that racial prejudice is also morally wrong. Would you would you agree with that? Oh yes, sir. I think uh, racial prejudice is wrong. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now, why did uh, Mr. Cavett? This is his show. Why did he make it a point to bring out this particular segment of information? Well, uh, we have. The authority uh, in regards to secular matters is the law, right? And in regards to uh, matters that involve religion, uh, individuals, especially in this context, they trust that their religious leaders can set the precedent for them as to how they should act and think and behave. So Mr. Cavett is saying that even from a moral standpoint and as we mentioned since he brought God into the situation then uh, quite naturally then uh, religion would dictate morality and so here you have a religious leader that's saying uh, that racial prejudice racial prejudice one of the main causes of racial segregation is morally wrong so from this from religion standpoint, uh, racial uh, uh, prejudice is not acceptable. So on both fronts, we have a precedent set. Let's keep going. We have more, we, we, our government's probably practicing more prejudice today than ever practiced in all the land so mm -hmm. far as between the black and whites. Mm -hmm. There was a quote uh, that you made on the fight 
uh, in Miami that Muhammad Ali participated in with Jerry Quarry. And, uh, well, not in Miami, but in, in Atlanta. But uh, black people always felt that Atlanta was the model city of the South because of its integration and because of the participation in uh, uh, economics of black people. And uh, your statement uh, on the day of the fight was something like this, that it's a dark day in Georgia because this fight is being put on. Now, uh, the law of the land said that a man can participate uh, in his particular profession unless he is in jail. Uh, I felt very happy that this fight took place in Atlanta. How did, how did you feel about I it? I felt very sad. And why was that? Here's a man that, that, that has <clears throat> said, well, here I want to fight in the ring for money, but I won't even wear the uniform of my country. He says that I, I can't do this, but it, 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 in other words, I'm going to act different from these other people who stand up for their country and put on the uniform. Uh, it, had they not fought for this country, if they were not even fighting today and wearing this uniform, that he could not even get in a ring and fight and be a free man to but fight. But isn't it true So he, he's, he's helping to bring, tear down this country with this philosophy, with this belief. Suppose every American, Mr. Brown, suppose every American had decided that they were not going to put on the uniform of their country and not fight for it. So now, the conclusion that Mr. Maddox came to, was it a logical one? Let's go back. Let's think about something. The precedent that Mr. Maddox set was that he believed it was unconstitutional. It was against the law to force an individual to integrate or to force an individual to segregate. It was against the law. And so... Uh, the reason why he felt that way is because there is no choice in the matter. You're being forced, which is the very definition of removing an individual's options in a situation. But then at the same time, do you see that Mr. Maddox is also saying that there should be no choice when it comes to an individual going off to war to fight individuals who they have no personal grievances with. And so you hear the rhetoric that he mentioned about individuals uh, putting on the uniform and going to fight for their country. He was not willing to do that, Muhammad Ali, but he was willing to get in the ring and fight an individual for money. Now, is that a logical fallacy that he came up with? Because think about it for a sec. Think about it. Uh, the ability for Mr. Ali to get in the ring and fight his opponent, uh, that ability is a choice that he makes. Uh, he can choose to fight, he can choose not to fight. But as uh, Mr. Brown mentioned, this is his profession, and so he chooses to engage in this profession to take care of himself and his family. But now, when it comes to uh, the situation of war at that particular time Muhammad Ali had been drafted and the only thing that's being said here is not saying that it's wrong to fight for your country that's left up to the individual but the very uh, decision to go and fight or not to fight should be a personal choice decided by each individual and if it is a personal choice that's decided by each individual there are undoubtedly going to be individuals that see things the way Mr. Maddox sees them. They're going to volunteer. So the conclusion that he reached is not one that's based on logic and clear thinking. We can see that emotion is starting to erode the discussion. Uh, it's starting to uh, push logic out. Let's keep going. We, we, would, we, wouldn't have a United, we wouldn't have a United States of America, and I couldn't be on your show, and you probably wouldn't even have a show Isn't tonight it true? if Isn't everybody it? had had that attitude. And I don't like it, and I don't care whether you like it, don't care who don't like it. Well, I, uh, I, uh, I did serve. I did serve my time, which, of course, I was a little before Muhammad Ali, and I was not maybe as intelligent as he is because he was the first individual, I think, in this country that came out and said he had nothing against the Viet Cong. I think there were two other politicians in the country that made a very similar statement later. Uh, the late Bobby Kennedy came back from Vietnam and basically said the same thing. At the time, it was not a popular stand to make, but today it is a very popular stand. 
In fact, we have a lieutenant that's on trial now for certain uh, things that happened in Vietnam. But I am saying that this man followed the law of the land. He made his stand. He has been fighting through the courts. He has gone to the higher courts, and he will go to jail if he is proven guilty. Well, I hope now, he don't does you feel, go. Can I hope, finish? Because I think he's guilty Can of treason. Can I finish? Can I finish? Don't you feel that whenever a man goes through the courts, that he is abiding by the laws of the land, and that man who is willing to stand up with that decision is a brave man, regardless of what his beliefs might be? I know a lot of Southerners who, uh, you know, really like black people. And, uh, you know, they portray them. So now, uh, looking at what was just said, especially by Mr. Maddox, we've already established that society uh, has imposed rules on itself so that uh, individuals can live in peace along with each other. And so the point is, uh, Mr. Brown is trying to make is that at each step, uh, the course that's taken by uh, Mr. Ali is one that is abiding by the law. Even if he's found guilty and he has to go to jail, that's a sacrifice he's willing to make because, as he mentioned, he had no quarrel with the Viet Cong. So, if we have a society and it's governed by rules or laws, and those laws are there to help us to continue to work together and to move forward, then inevitably there are going to be changes that are going to be made in the way that we deal with each other so that we can operate together more efficiently. That's the whole purpose of society. But let's keep it going. They themselves as uh, being really segregationists and that they hate black people and so forth. But uh, I know some black people feel <coughs> the same way, but I don't know. I don't know any Southerners that don't like, uh, white Southerners don't like blacks. Do you know of any? Can you name uh, one? I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. That's a very interesting I mean, can point. you name one? No, I'm, I'm going to answer that question. It's an interesting point, you it see. It is, yeah. Well, they like uh, uh, black people, but they like them in a role, you see. They like them when they're very humble and they're very loyal. Well, I like humble people whether they're white I, or black, I don't know, you? I know, but you see. And loyal people whether they're black the white, or white, the, don't the white you? People I mean, you just like them. You don't, like the them loyal, loyal you don't like the white black or... people to have the choice, you see. It's only a matter of choice. I want black people and white <clears throat> people to have choice. Well, you let me you ask got you... it all mixed up. You're let... trying to twist it around. No, no, I'm only huh? trying to agree with you. Would you let me finish? If you'll tell the truth. Well, I'm only making anal uh, uh, an analysis, really. So at this particular point in the conversation, the exchange of thoughts, the desire to understand each other, has broken down because you see you can't have successful dialogue in an unreasonable situation if the person that sits across from you makes themselves unreasonable then you can't have dialogue and so it's clear that uh, Governor Maddox feels that Mr. Brown is being unreasonable and it's clear that Mr. Brown feels that Mr. Maddox is being unreasonable but and all of the things that have been said, what I would like to highlight is that discipline comes in when an individual, as we mentioned, is able to keep their composure. They don't let emotions drive them. They're able to keep their composure. And so the individual in this particular setting who keeps their composure despite insults, despite things that are said uh, that are meant to evoke a emotional response. If an individual is able to keep their composure in the face of that, then that conversation to them, although they could not exchange ideas successfully, that's a conversation that an individual is willing to live with. They can go away from that conversation and maybe they would hope that it went uh, better than it did, but they did the best that they could do. So let's keep going. Really, it's not a matter of truth or, or, or false. Uh, what I'm really saying is that basically history has proven that uh, during the days of slavery, whenever a slave was more or less humble and he did what he was told, that he was in good favor with, with the master. But whenever a slave was too educated, uh, if he became aware of his own self and he wanted to become more 
than the master wanted him to become, then he was a bad slave. He was then put down because he represented a threat to the already established kind of white look, society. Look, let me say this. Those situations are true <clears throat> with white people and black people. Now, you're just trying to point it at black people only. Because but they've that's, been through, that's throughout uh, the, the history of the we're world. There's been discrimination, black against black, black against white, white against black, and white mm -hmm. against white. There always has been, there always will be. You're and not you're not going to wipe it out, and Tricky Dick's not going to wipe it out, and the Supreme Court's not going to wipe it out. <laughs> you're not addressing it. <laughs> You're not addressing uh, Are you your answer to, to my question. Are you referring to me as Tricky Dick? No, you know, you know who I'm talking about. Oh, you are. Oh. So now, uh, I will include a link to the uh, entirety of this segment of the uh, interview, the debate between Governor Maddox and uh, Mr. Jim Brown. Uh, the video in its entirety is about 13 minutes and 14 seconds. We covered about 9 minutes and 15 seconds of it. Uh, so the uh, rhetoric that follows is not really one of trying to communicate thoughts effectively. Uh, it has, in a sense, broken down to uh, insults and uh, negative uh, thoughts and expressions. And so that's of no benefit to us. But if you notice throughout, logic and reasoning uh, in the beginning of the conversations, there were precedents that were made. And in order to have a reasonable, logical conversation, and when precedents are made, those precedents have to be in keeping with each other or logic breaks down. And so discipline comes into play is when an individual is able to see through the emotion that's involved with the subject that's being discussed and see the truth behind what's being said. Because uh, we know there was truth involved in what Governor Maddox said. There was truth involved in what Mr. Brown said. And they were there to help each other to understand the truth that was involved in both arguments. Uh, it's a shame that uh, the conversation didn't go in a positive direction, but we can see what happens when an individual loses their discipline in a certain situation. They lose their composure, and then that composure uh, in turn causes the conversation to deteriorate into nothing but an argument. Uh, so discipline is needed, especially in situations where it calls upon us to see the viewpoint of someone that may be our polar opposite. As always, we thank you for supporting us. Be easy.